Hey guys, Mutant Ninja Matt here, and today we're going to be talking about the Superstar Shake-Up which has happened on Raw and Smackdown, and I really wish this was still just the draft. Anyway, we'll start with Raw. We're going to be talking about who went over and some of the highlight moments for me. There's a lot more highlight moments on Raw than on Smackdown. So who actually went to Raw? I have the list right here. We had Jinder Mahal, we had the Riot Squad, we had Kevin and Sammy, Zack Ryder, Bree Zango, Natalia, Mojo Rawley, Dolph Ziggler, Drew McIntyre, Baron Corbin, Bobby Roode, Mike Kanellis, Chad Gable, and The Ascension. The way they said the shakeup worked was that Paige and Kurt Angle sat down and did trades, and it makes Kurt Angle look really quite ridiculous because so many of his swaps, he just got like SmackDown's mid card or jobbers and SmackDown got a lot better picks. With Kevin and Sammy, basically Steph McMahon overruled Kurt and said they deserve jobs. It was obvious this was coming when they were fired from SmackDown Live. The shakeup does mean there's opportunities for people to revitalize their careers. So people like Ascension, Breezango, Zack Ryder, Mojo Rawley, it is a good call. It's refreshing for people like Dolph Ziggler, Drew McIntyre, obviously we got some NXT call-ups, which was cool. The highlights from Raw for me, we got to see a lot of these WWE interviews of people commenting on the Superstar Shake-Up. A lot of people were indifferent, but there was one of Daniel Bryan basically saying like he bleeds Team Blue and he wants to stay on SmackDown firmly and I liked seeing that somebody turning around and being like, no, screw the other brand. Jeff Hardy became the new United States Champion, which I loved because it cements that Jeff is having a solo run, Matt's doing his own thing at the moment, and taking the title off Jinder is just always nice. <laughs> the card for Greatest Rumble Ever is just building up. It actually looks like it's going to be a hell of a show. The only match I can't get my head around is the casket match, because I keep seeing different reports saying it's Rusev, then it's Jericho, then it's Rusev again, and it's really confusing. We have Bailey and Sasha's rivalry has finally blown up properly and in their match they were just really striking each other and it looked awesome. When Mojo moved over, he did this promo where he was saying it's Monday Night Rawley, which I really liked. But I also just liked his overall intensity and the fact that he's saying, you know, he's intelligent, he's athletic and actually he has all the tools to be a massive star. When he did his get hyped gimmick, I was just, I couldn't stand him, but if we get a more serious and intense mojo, I could get behind him. We found out that Miz is going to be going to SmackDown, which I thought was really interesting because Daniel Bryan was the one pushing for it. And the Miz-Daniel Bryan rivalry is something that's been building for years that we've wanted to see a big payoff for. And we also found out that obviously the Miz Taraj would not be going with Miz. And later on in the night, they kind of abandoned him because they realised, like, well, he's going. So Matt and Bray are actually getting quite a push. And I'm shocked because I thought it would be a novelty team and they'd pick up losses. But they're actually doing quite well. And I'm glad because this has the potential to be a really interesting team. When Dolph came out, I looked and thought, you know what, Dolph has the talent. He just needs to be put in the right situation for him to actually get somewhere on Raw. And then he teams up with Drew McIntyre. And my first reaction was, you've put Drew with Dolph and that could damage Drew McIntyre. The crowd was going insane for Drew, but their team finisher of the kick and the zigzag actually looked really cool. And I like the idea of them not being a tag team, but just two guys who are gonna lay waste to everyone and just take what they want. We had a huge upset win, Breezango beating the bar. And Breezango, especially Tyler Breeze, really talented in the ring and they shouldn't just be a backstage comedy gimmick they should be out there doing well in matches the only other thing that really stood out for me it was a little moment it was just ronda kind of helping natalia out but i like how ronda's punches and her fighting style is still very much in the vein of mma and she looks like she's just legit smacking the shit into people
Right, then we've got who went over to SmackDown, and you'll see why I think SmackDown definitely got the better end of it. SmackDown got The Miz, Jeff Hardy, Absolution, Samoa Joe, Big Cass, Sanity, Asuka, The Club, The Bar, R-Truth, Almas, and Zelina Vega. Miz and Jeff are huge picks. We now get to see Miz and Daniel Bryan. We can see Miz go after the US title and elevate that title. You've got Jeff currently with the US title and just being entertaining. With Absolution, obviously Paige is the GM and how will that play a role into them? It's interesting. Joe is a huge pick. Big Cass coming back. And the fact that it actually looks like Big Cass is going to have a program with Daniel Bryan. So that's pretty huge. It gives Daniel a feud to lead up to Miz. Having the club, the bar, Sanity. They've got some solid tag teams. Obviously Sanity and NXT call up as well. And having Almas and Selena come up together as NXT call up. So I'm excited to see what they can do. Really not a lot of highlights however for me from Smackdown. A lot of people that got traded over just got little video packages saying, by the way, they're coming to SmackDown, which was a bit disappointing. One thing that is quite exciting, now Chad Gable's gone, Shelton Benjamin looks like he's finally going to have a solo run, and he had a match with Jeff, and I'm a bit like, yeah, that's what I want to see. I want to see Shelton Benjamin going after the US title. Shin once again came out and hit a low blow on AJ during his match, and the thing is, he again did the same thing as last week. And I was really excited for heel Shinsuke, but if he literally is going to do the same thing every week, it's going to make him incredibly stale, which is what we don't want. I mentioned as well already about the big cast moments with Daniel Bryan. I thought they were very decent. One thing I've noticed that they keep doing, and a lot of people have said it's so shit, is the text on screen because the bar cut their promo. And they keep just putting words and text and emojis on the screen while people are cutting their promos. And it really takes you out of it. But it's like I said, there are a lot of just video packages and not a lot that really took my interest on SmackDown. I thought their picks were a lot better, but that Raw had more going on in their show. But an interesting shake-up. Obviously, we've now got the co-branded pay-per-view, so we'll see how everything works out. Anyway guys, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe as it really helps the channel out. If you go down below, you'll be able to find social media links. I'm gonna head off because it's actually incredibly warm. British summer has turned up and we actually have like 20 degrees weather. So I'm adjusting. See you in the next one. Too sweet.